Steve Hansen here with the janitorialstore.com where we help cleaning business owners scale their businesses and build system reliant companies, not owner reliant companies. Say, is your uh, cleaning business ready to be scaled? Now, you can see, you often see some videos and articles on uh, scaling your company. And, um, you know, there's a lot of work to that. And uh, in order to scale your business, the number one rule is that you have to have systems in place. If you do not have systems in place in your business, there is no way that you can scale your business. And in fact, there's actually three things you need in order to scale your business. You need systems, you need controls, and you need team. Without all three of those, it's going to be very difficult for you to scale your business. If anybody tells you anything different, they're wrong. You have to have those three. So when we talk about scaling our business, um, you know, that's where we're going to uh, take our revenue, uh, you know, and multiply it year after year and uh, build it into, you know, the million dollar business. You know, everybody wants that million dollar business, but uh, very few even get there. So in order to uh, scale your business, uh, first of all, you need your systems and controls. Now on my board here, what I have is I have, uh, you got core pillars. Uh, your core pillars are the backbone of your um, uh, of your systems. So in your core pillars, you got sales and marketing, you got operations, you got team, finance, and leadership. So those are the five core pillars of every business um, that uh, that you would have in order to be able to scale your business and develop all your systems. Doesn't matter if we're a cleaning business or if it's an attorney's office or a, a, a mechanical office or whatever it is. It just, it doesn't matter. Any type of business is going to need these systems and controls in place with these five core pillars. So that's where you want to start. Now, a lot of things, a lot of times uh, business owners will tell me is uh, they just don't have time. Um, you know, and that's true because uh, if you're the president of the company, depending on how your company's organized and where you're at as far as revenue and so on and so forth and, and your structure, that can be very difficult to do. So my advice is the first thing you need to do before you even think about scaling your business is taking a look at your organizational chart. So review your organizational chart, and if you don't have one, create one. Uh, if you don't have one, go to the janitorialstore.com and down the library, uh, do a search for organizational chart, and you're going to find one. Uh, we actually have charts in there that uh, have it scaled up to $2 million in revenue. So that's the first thing you got to do is have an organizational chart. You have to know where you're at and where you're going to be going uh, in order to scale your business. And again, everybody wants that million dollar business. Well, uh, if that's the case, then draw your organizational chart out to where you are currently. If you're doing a hundred thousand, a two hundred thousand, whatever that number may be, and and write it out and uh, uh, have the chart so it flows until you hit the two uh, until you hit the million dollar mark. Now, uh, the ones that we have in the janitorial store are, are kind of nice because I designed those to where if you're currently doing uh, $250,000. In revenue I've got those that structure in black now if you were wanted to scale to 500,000 those are all in red so it's real easy when you look at the organizational chart to see okay if I'm here these are the positions or, or the uh, positions I need in my business currently to generate that $250,000 and in everything in red here is everything now I'll need all the position I'll need in order to scale to half a million dollars and, I, uh, and you'll see that I did that for, for all the charts, all the way up to $2 million in revenue. So that's the first thing you have to do. You have to determine you know, what positions you need in your business in order to scale to that, to that amount. And uh, I'd, I'd advise you too, while you're at it, while you're doing your uh, organizational chart, uh, to go ahead and uh, write job descriptions for all the positions on your organizational chart. Do it now, why wait? You create your organizational chart, write your job descriptions, uh, then you're ready to roll. So now that we did that, we have to combat the, the issue that, oh, I just don't have time. I, I, there's no way I can scale my business because I don't have time. Well, that's where you want to do an exercise that we call Time Tracker. And Time Tracker is where uh, we would have you list the activities that you do every day, throughout the day, for at least two weeks. Two weeks to a month 
so then once you uh, have uh, written all those activities down, then we're going to have you go back and we're going to have you identify which activities are A activities, B activities, uh, C activities, and D activities. Uh, this is very important because what we want to do is we want to identify where you're wasting your time. And uh, by doing this exercise, it's quite apparent when you're, when you're done, just where you're wasting your time. Now you have to remember in the exercise that we do, the time tracker, that uh, you, the president, the CEO, you want to be working on A and B activities. Those are the activities that are really moving the business forward. Uh, your C activities are, are activities that you would uh, generally do just to keep the, the business going. Uh, D activities are activities you just don't need to be doing, such as checking email, uh, getting on social media, uh, you know, those types of activities, uh, you know, those are all D activities for you. Now, within your team, that activity may be an A activity for somebody else. But for you, it's a D activity. And that's what you would do is you go through, write, your, write all the activities that you're doing, uh, then go back and label them A, B, C, D. Once you have identified A, B, C, D, now you want to go back through and each activity that you do, uh, put a time associated to it. So you have the activity of the time and then you'll have the, the ranking A, B, C, D. Because now what you'll be able to do, uh, you'll be able to go back and um, take a look at how much time you're actually wasting on D activities. So there you go. So now once you've done that and you've identified uh, where you need to be spending your your time at, your activity, you know, your, your, your time um, on things that are going to move the business forward, uh, you also now can be focusing on your systems and controls. Now remember, when we talk about systems and controls, you do not have to do this all by yourself. In fact, if you're a solo, op uh, solo entrepreneur, then it's all on you. Um, you know, these, this uh, type of thing really takes a lot of time. Uh, and, uh, you know, it may take you uh, in excess of a year, year and a half maybe to to develop most, a majority of your systems that you'll need for your business. Um, the thing is that once you create your systems, they never end, uh, they never go away. Because once you create them, uh, for example, if you're a quarter of a million dollar company and you've developed a system for hiring employees, onboarding, well, as you continue to scale and you're at 500,000, 700,000, that system may change. So all you have to do is go back, you got the groundwork laid, all you have to do is go back and, and edit it and update it. So that's the beauty about it. Once you create that system, it's a matter of just updating it as you continue to scale your business. For, what, for whatever reason, you might tweak that system a bit. So remember that. Uh, the system will never go away. You're just always going to update it uh, as you continue to scale. And one thing I'd advise you of, um, if you are a company that has employees, um, and uh, you have people that, such as supervisors or managers, have them develop some of these systems. Um, you know, maybe uh, uh, for a supervisor, maybe you'll have them uh, do a quality control system. You know, have the people that do these things day in and day out develop the system. Uh, there's no need for you as the president or the CEO to uh, try to develop all these systems on your own. If you have a team, use them. Um, and in fact, you know, uh, one thing that you can do is that you can implement to where people have focus days and uh, on those focus days, they can specifically work on just, just that, just our systems and controls. So, uh, that would be a, a good little tip for you there too. But, um, now back to our systems and controls, uh, you have to be able to lay this out. Uh, you have to have some place to put it all. Because if it's uh, more than just yourself and you have a, a team of people, uh, let's say there's, uh, there, there's yourself and three other people that are working on your systems and controls, the best thing to do is to have a place on your computer, uh, such as Dropbox or some other secure area, where you're going to put this, uh, this, uh, this business system. And what you want to do is give it some kind of a name. Uh, call it an ultimate, ultimate business system, you know, or, or whatever, whatever the name is, that's fine. But give it a name and then put it somewhere where it's secure to where people can add files and folders and videos and things like that to it uh, because that's what you're going to do as you're creating these systems. You're going to create uh, documents such as Word documents or, or uh, Google documents. It could be videos. It could be audios. But uh, that's what you want to do is have a format 
set up to where uh, a person would be able to go in there and either read a document, watch a video, or listen to an audio as to the process of how we do a certain task. Um, that's what you want to do. Now on my board, uh, what I have here is I've got the five pillars and you're going to break these five pillars down uh, to, in, to, their own, uh, to their own areas. So here I've got uh, 1.0 sales and marketing. And um, within, that, uh, within that pillar, I've got a number of different systems. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, ours, uh, we have 20, 30 systems within one pillar. Uh, you know, it can get quite extensive. So here we got uh, 1.0 sales and marketing. So 1.1 is lead generation. So what are the systems that we have to generate to create, uh, to get uh, lead generation? So here we label 1.12 is SEO. That's one of our systems we have to develop. The other one is 1.13, uh, uh, email. So what are we doing for that? And 1.14, brochures, postcards, flyers. 1.15, uh, pay-per-click. What is our system for pay-per-click? And again, then 1.16, networking. What are we doing for networking? Are we doing uh, social networking? Are we doing in-house or in-person networking? What are we doing there? Let's write out our system for that. Same thing applies now. We're still in marketing and, and uh, sales and marketing, but now we got an, another area. We got 1.2, uh, which is lead conversion. So now we're talking about lead conversion. And in lead conversion, we got more systems. And again, this could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 it all depends on your company. But uh, for the example here, I got 1.2.1 is landing pages. We have to create a system for our landing pages. Same here now, 1.2.2, calls to action. It's very important on any of our uh, marketing materials that we're using that we have call to action. So what's our process for that? How, how, you know, how, what's, what are the steps? How do we do this? And then uh, we got 1.2.3 uh, point, uh, uh, point point is email automation with uh, autoresponders. The same thing now, if you're going to have an auto, uh, email automation, what's your system for setting that up and setting up your autosponders and things like that there? Very, very important. But anyway, this here gives you an idea on how you might lay out your, uh, your, your system or your, yeah, your systems and your controls. Um, so uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you because this is really what you need. When we talk about scaling your business, you have to develop systems and controls and you have to develop a great team. That's the only way you're going to be able to scale your business to be a million dollar business or beyond. Uh, you know, we have customers and, and members that do well, well above a million dollars. Uh, you know, there's some there, you know, a couple million dollars, $50 million. Uh, they're doing very, very well. So uh, this is actually a program that, uh, that I coach. Uh, in my coaching program. It's business development. Um, so if you're interested in this, I will be starting a group coaching uh, program. Uh, so uh, watch for that. Uh, it's going to be very affordable for, for uh, people to, to join. Um, and this is the thing that we're going to go over is to where we can develop, where you can develop your systems and controls uh, for your business so you can scale. You know, so uh, that's what it's all about. Well, that's it. Uh, you know, that's all I have for now. If you if you like the video, uh, make sure you like the video and share share the video. Uh, if you have any questions, I can answer. Just uh, post them down below, and I'll be more than happy to uh, to answer them. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always contact me through email, uh, and or just go to the janitorial store or my house cleaning business and get on the chat. And uh, I'm generally on there. But uh, this is the process in which you want to use to scale your business to get you started. Uh, it's not easy, like I said. Um, it's it's a quite a process, and in fact, uh, uh, this process is, is also used for a, a program that we have for being SIM certified. Uh, it's all about creating your 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 uh, SOPs, and that's exactly what these are: standard operating procedures. Um, every company needs them, but and also for that SIM certification, they make they have requirements as to what you have to have in order to uh, become certified as a SIM certified company. And we, we have a total, a total separate uh, 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 documents for that. It's actually a, a, a six, uh, actually uh, six uh, areas that, uh, that we have hundreds and hundreds of documents in for just the SIM certification. But for you that uh, want to scale your business, uh, this is what you want to do, is that you want to do what I just explained. Develop your systems control in your team. 
if you do that, you'll be successful. Um, you know, don't be I, like some other, other videos that I've done in the past. You know, don't be like some of these companies that are two million, three million, five million dollars and haven't got the system developed that they should have had developed a long time ago. So, you know, be smart. Uh, develop them now. Get them, get them developed, and then just update them, update them as you need them. So, there it is. Uh, we'll talk to you, talk to you later, and hopefully you found this helpful.